This is the bee's knees, the cat's pajamas, and the whole shebang. And most importantly, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Organo. And you're listening to Peter and Jake talking wrestling. You are now listening to the Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling Podcast, a weekly review of Monday Night Raw and other wrestling-related topics. And here's your hosts, Peter Day and Jake Grandi. One, two, three, four, put them all in the trunk. What up? What up? Hey, guys. Hello, boys. Hello, girls. Oh, shit. Let me get my, my notes right. Um, how's everybody doing? You are now listening to Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling. How you doing, Jake? I'm doing fantastic. Last day of classes were today, so I get my, I think, two-week summer vacation before summer school starts. And what you going to do with that time? Um, I'm going to relax. You're going to have a lot of sex with your girl? Uh, maybe. Maybe. I mean, she doesn't That's have... That still work, though. She didn't have a day job, so we're unless, unless, those... unless she's that hot where it's not work. No, it works. It works. No, not work. It's not work. Oh, no, no, it's all good. That's, <laughs> it's not work. It's all good. <laughs> oh man, that's that's gonna be right there. Okay, that's cool. Man, I listened to last week's. Man, I was I was I was feeling it last week. Yeah. Yeah. I was like over. I feel like I was cutting you off. I was like, dude, I was because I was like three beers in, drinking another beer. I was like excited. Yeah, well, I got a Red Bull and an AP right now, Arnold Palmer from Arizona, so I might be cutting you off. Today. Oh, wait, then you pull out the PBR. I pull out the, and As I say that, he just pulls the PBR, folks, out yeah, of the yeah. table. Yeah, like, very interesting. <laughs> so, because I'm, I'm like in fucking mode. It was like he pulled out the Singapore cane from out from under the, uh, from the ring. I'm a giant. I don't need this. <laughs> so, you know what? Because we have, we know we. The first and only the first and only thing I want to talk about because I feel like I could talk about the Booker T shit like oh I don't later I, it's no big deal I could talk about that well, with, let's just knock it out now because well I, no I mean like but not really because I mean it's I think it's a it's it's a little more involved because I feel like I think he just slipped up man I think he was just trying to put over the gimmick yeah yeah totally that's all yeah. it was that's I all mean, it was and anyone because I feel like. I, I felt like he saw the words leaving his mouth. Oh yeah, it's and like, it like it, he wanted to grab him and shove him back into his mouth because he was like, "Defy, defy gravity!" Like, oh fuck, why did he even bring up Owen? See, I, I've had tons of moments in my life like that, but it's around friends, you know, or, or at least acquaintances, where you can then say, "Oh, I didn't mean it like that," but in, in a wrestling announcing sense, you gotta just ignore it and move on. And plus, it's and like. Plus- Assholes are too sensational about things. Yeah, I didn't even catch that until I was listening to another podcast, and he brought it up. And then I thought that he just brought it up as kind of like a a shitty joke. And then I went on Twitter today, and it's actually like people are actually thinking... Really upset. Come on. I mean, he did slip up, but it's ridiculous. I mean, Booker T probably knows... It would have been... If he would have said... If they would have said any name, Booker T's response would have been that. If he would have said... If he would have said any high flyer from back in the day, yeah. if he would have said like fucking like, but I don't even think it was a high flyer. I think he just said something, and he's like, "Oh, we're talking too much. We're talking too much about the past. Let's bring it to the match again." Because no, that's it, what Booker T does. Yeah, it, it, that's it. It could have been anybody. It could have been. He could have said Razor Ramon. He said, "Yeah, but he can he can he defy gravity?" You know, like he would have just followed up. His his intention was to put over the current talent, which is Neville at the time, and that's his gimmick. That he defies gravity. Exactly. And it's almost just like, I mean, because who else? Because who else had a slip up? Zombie, the JBL had a slip up. Zombie uh, Guerrero. Oh, really? Do you remember that? Because that that was a big deal. Oh, he's like a zombie Eddie Guerrero, and he was. I think he was talking about um, Luke Harper. Yeah. Well, see right there. See, that's someone just trying to prove the current product, current talent. But I think. People can say whatever they want nowadays on Twitter, so they feel like it's their right to say whatever hey, they want. You know? with, with, with the current situation happening in Baltimore, it is like the quintessential idea that you just brought up. That everyone thinks they have a, a fucking opinion that everyone fucking cares about. And you know what? Spoiler alert. 
no one cares. Yeah, we all have assholes. Yeah. You know what? If we can have a conversation about something and you want to say, hey, here's your views on this and here's my views on this and we can go back and forth with that shit, then that's what's important. Not like, let me stand on a soapbox and fucking like put my nose in the air and, and think that what what's what I'm either using with my thumbs to express makes any difference in the world. Because you know what? The last time you took a shit, it smelled really bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, if anyone, everyone who's given Booker T shit, I know that they've had a slip up before. But the problem is, they're not talented enough to be on TV in the first place. I don't give a fuck if you have slipped up before. <laughs> like, do yourself a favor and stop being judgmental over things that you don't have control over, and stop trying to make it seem like what you have to say about any anybody's life in general, in general. Fuck your opinion on anyone else's life. They live their life. If they're going out murdering and killing people, yeah, you know what? Give them hell. But if someone's just like doing their thing, whether it's your comments on the Baltimore protests or riots, wherever you want to see, or like what the fuck Booker T just happened to say on the microphone, you know what? You need a life. You need a fucking life. You need a life. Get one. Get, get a subscription at the Y. You know, go to the gym, yeah, dude. like, like pump some weights, run a lap or two, get that fucking shit out your system, man. Some really nice hikes you can go on, really nice trails around America. Have some sex, you know, that relieves a lot of pressure, you know. It does, it does. I was thinking about running myself, you know, now that school's over. But... Sleepy time tea, man. Not that Red Bull. No. They don't sponsor us. Not that Red Bull shit. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't got no Amazon link to buy like a box of fucking Red Bull. And that and 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 but I also wanted to bring up um, the death of Vern Gagne. And I imagine your dad was probably hit by this. Oh uh, yeah, um, I'm I'm too young. I only know him really as like a figure that the talking heads on all the DVDs talk about or whatnot. But he was a promoter back in the day, part of the territory. So he was no WWF, no no AWA, no WWF. He brought all those big stars over, yeah. all of them. Like and. I'm not going to sit back and try to pretend that I know who this guy is. I've heard of him over the years, and, exactly. I, and I know what he's about. But, like, the stuff that I've been listening to since his death, like the podcast, whether it's PW Torch, whether it's uh, uh, the uh, Stone Cold, and they got to talking about him, and you realize how big of – he's – you talk about, like, if you want to break up the whole Mount Rushmore of wrestling – in terms of who they are as a worker, who they were as a promoter, their involvement, he's up there, without a shadow of a doubt. Vern Gagne is on the, you know, yeah. What he did in Minnesota, how he built up all these different wrestlers, whether Ric Flair, I know, like I know, like AWA, Hulk Hogan. I think AWA was the first. I know, like WWE doesn't like mentioning it, but I think AWA was the first time uh, Andre the Giant and Hogan met. All of them. All, all that I, stuff. I know, uh, in particular, I remember a really fun match that's on a Hogan DVD of Hogan and Paul Orndorff wrestling. It's like a baseball stadium full mm-hmm. of people. This mm-hmm. dude, this guy promoted. So like, in the uh, Twin Stadium. Yeah, I only know him through the slight bit of work that he's done. I don't. I, if you, if you show me a picture of him, I wouldn't be able to. Your tell dad, you. your, your dad ever go through him? Uh, no, no. That uh, he stayed normally just in the South, okay. and then went overseas a little bit. But he never went up to in Minnesota. I'm not sure if. I'm not sure. Did you ever ask him? Uh, no, but I just know. You should ask him. I should, yeah. Well, we could, we might be able to do something. I want to do something with him soon. I mean, I didn't, I wouldn't necessarily say I stood him up, but it never came to fruition of me actually getting to talk to him and just talk stories and whatnot. Huh. Speaking of what, you get uh, stories. You got any feedback from your John uh, Hitchcock? Um, yeah, a few people have, you know, retweet, reposted Garvin Stomp. Uh, gentleman, he really likes it. And then uh, this guy who does another podcast, Outside Interference, he uh, retweeted it today and said that he really liked. It, so there's pretty good stories in there. Um, and I'll, you know, it's moving. It's moving along. It seems like uh, I kind of like it. And uh, I'm gonna now that I'm done with school and everything, I'm gonna get a chance to read the book. And I'm uh, actually gonna get someone who doesn't really like wrestling that but loves books in general. And we're gonna actually do a, a follow-up interview just to get things going with that. So in the coming weeks. So rest in peace, Vern Gagne. Uh, your contributions to 
what we call sports entertainment today would not be there without oh, your yeah. contributions. He gave Hogan his break. So yeah. right there, that started started everything. Yeah. It's like, it's always fun. It's funny to look at a guy like Eric Bischoff and what he did with WCW and how he was getting all the wrestlers from WWE and then Vince was upset. It's like, wait a minute. Didn't you just do this? Didn't you do that to Vern Gagne? Yeah. Like, like it's almost like, you know, Pat Riley and him being upset with LeBron James were going back to Cleveland. It's like, wait a minute. You stole him from Cleveland. Yep. So when they take him back, like, just go like, you know what? I got what I could out of them, and I'm going to move forward. I, I think that's why they gave him respect on the, on the show is because they kind of deep down they know what he, what he showed them, you know. So let's let's go into um, extreme rules review. Let's try to make this as we're gonna try to make this concise as possible. No, yeah, it's just, tough. I mean, it's very multi layered show. I give it a five. You give it a five? I, I it's not. I, I don't want to give it a five, but and this, I give it a I give it like a five. Can I say I give I give the first half an eight and I give the second half a five. So I'll rough it out around a six and a half. For the whole show. There was things that I liked, and there was a lot of things I didn't like. And then maybe it's just me nitpicking, and there were certain things that saved it. I mean, if... Well, you should love this show. You, uh, this is a, this is a monumental moment for you, Peter. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I do a live... If you're listening, I actually have live... I do, like, a live reactions. I'm looking, I got the phone pointing at my face as I'm giving dialogue to how I feel about what's happening in the match... And you know, oh, oh, hey, oh, blah, blah, blah. Oh man, oh, I'm waiting for a low blow. Oh, he did it. So go, go to the YouTube. Go to the Peter and Jake talks wrestling YouTube page, and uh, check that out, and you'll be highly entertained. And just so you don't have to like flick through and see what I'm talking about, within the description box and even within the first comment, I actually have the matches that I'm talking about timed code so you can just click the time and go to see which reaction you're most interested in and in, interested in in seeing me talk about um but yeah i'm fucking okay one forfeit but i'm perfect yeah the one forfeit obviously well we'll just dive right into it and we'll explain last time i was like one in fucking eight he got them all right, folks. That's just... That's it. And I don't know if that's a good or bad thing. Well, I think it, you definitely had it coming to you, because we definitely give you a lot of shit about WrestleMania only getting one right. You only got the ladder match right at WrestleMania, and that was the first match. Uh, but, you know, this is it. This is this is your... Uh, well, I wish it was I wish it was next month, because this is your payoff. This is my coup de grace. This is my, pay, this is my payoff? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for, for fucking extreme rules. So this is like... You're like... This is like your ultimate warrior moment last year man you know this is like we gave you that shitty he DVD. died though well well don't don't do that don't don't jinx don't me man okay, yeah, i'm not trying to hex you i'm not trying i'm saying life sucks right now but i ain't ready to hang <laughs> it up yet you know what i'm saying well, i'm good over here obviously everyone knows brian wasn't there so they brought out neville and uh barrett you know kind of put over you know that he took out brian and that he was going to wrestle neville whatever uh it was a good pre-show match uh, Neville was always good, and I think that Barrett might be his. I think Barrett and him worked really well together. Like they, uh, both characters played really well off of each other's style. You know? Do you know what? And uh, and Neville won. Uh, but Barrett he, always does the job to the new guys. You don't yeah. have you noticed that? He started with Bo Dallas. He had a few with Bo Dallas, fresh out of NXT, and that was yeah. Neville. It's a shame. His body is perfect. Well, I mean, we'll go into what... He might be getting his push, but he did lose to Neville on the pre-show out of Extreme Rules. So we'll just negate that because he picked Barrett, but it's it's wrong because Barrett didn't lose to Brian, but I picked Brian. Brian wasn't even out there, and Neville won. Great match. He won with a red arrow. And then uh, we had the second match, the kickoff to the actual show, Dean and Luke. I love the old school setup, how they go in the back, and they get in the car and drove away and everything. But they dropped the ball. I, I wish, I wish to God, I wish to God, it would have been this thing where, and they didn't have to do the whole thing. 
maybe one or two spots in like Outside. really random spots around Chicago. Just random spots. Yeah. Where you see and listening to um, Wade Keller and uh, Stone Cold Steve Ops podcast, mm-hmm. Wade Keller came up with the most amazing idea for this. It's like, what if they would have came back in another car? <laughs> like, I was like, that would have made it so awesome. Like, they leave in, like, a fucking, like, big black SUV, and they come back in a fucking, like, Saturn. I was thinking it'd be funny if, like, the the SUV, like, crashed into, like, the side of the set at, at like, toward the end or something, and they came rushing out onto the ramp. That would have been too much. <laughs> I mean, they, they I mean they had the car at the end. And plus they got pre-recording. They could have pre-recorded something to it looked like really reckless. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. But this is PG. And uh, we both had Dean, and he ended up winning Went after. Wait, no, no, no. We're not going there yet. We're leaving it right now. They just leave. Okay. Well, yeah, let me get. They left. They out. They out and peaced. And they dropped the ball on at least following what was happening in the streets of Chicago. That would have been so awesome. I don't know what it is about Dean Ambrose where they just refuse to, like, follow him around whenever he, like, takes a trip. <laughs> you know, like when he was in Coney Island. You remember that? Mm-hmm. And he, like, just leaves and he comes back with a hot dog stand. Like, they could have... Oh, they did the one thing when he was on the subway. That was it. And that was awkward. But nevertheless, still gold. Yeah. After that... You get to backstage, it becomes raw stream rules. A lot of like, a lot of segments, mm-hmm. backstage segments of people talking. Um, not your average pay per view thing, but this is the WWE Network uh, era of, of pay per view programming. So you you get um, you get Triple H in the back reprimanding both Kane and Rollins, and then Kane and Rollins starts bickering again. You get a bunch of boring chants. And this whole thing is just basically to set up, like, whose side you're on during the fucking cage match, right? That's it. Mm-hmm. Nothing really moves forward. We all know that there's this this thing happening where it's like, well, what side, whose side are you on? And it's like, yeah, they could have done without it. Boring chance. You're boring, boring. Man, that stuff is pretty boring. Like, bickering, like, three grown men bickering. I mean, wrestling does, yeah, you're supposed to get make drama. But it's supposed to be like drama that makes a match. But you know these three guys are... They've already proven that they're going to stick with each other, you know? Like... No. Yeah. It's just pretty boring, you know? At this, I agree with the Chicago and, but, crowd. Just, but just like with... Uh, what was it? The, 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 what was the one with Sting... Came, the the uh, Survivor... Ross... Ross... Survivor Series is... The yeah. first... They started doing raw segments. It's basically like a yeah. That was the first one, yeah. Yeah, and and like now you see the formula now, commercials. Oh yeah, and that, that bugs me. You pay nine ninety nine for the network. You pay nine ninety nine for the network. You don't pay nine ninety nine for the pay per view. Well, yeah, but there should not be any whatever, whatever for the event. Sorry for the event. Live event, special event for the uh, what's it called? Inter- sports entertainment show. <laughs> and then we had a uh, Ziggler versus Sheamus. Uh, this was a pretty good and match. And a kiss me arse match. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty good match. I would say there's some you know smooth drop kicks as always by Ziggler, and then that nice big suplex that he unveiled at this show, where he kind of just like picks you up and just like tosses you. No, he didn't unveil that. Did he? he didn't. No, he's been doing. I've been bitching about that move for the past four weeks now. You know what? Because like here's the thing. What he did before, and he unveiled it with Daniel Bryan. When he faced Daniel Bryan um, on SmackDown. Where he just kind of tosses him up. Just, ha, phew. Just, phew, and lets him drop. And I was like, this is the most reckless move I've ever seen in my entire life. Anyone who's been listening to, to, to Peter talk SmackDown, you can attest to me having a problem with this move. But last Thursday, in his match, he guided them down. Like he fought, he he guides him down. Before he was like, Whoop. "Have a cigarette as you fall, and possibly just break an arm or your neck." But now he guides them down to a certain degree, and that and I'm like, oh, "Thank God, thank God!" Like a sigh of relief came over me, like you wouldn't believe that he's altered that move. Um, but this is the stiffest I've ever seen. Dolph Ziggler, and this is the why. This is the part of Sheamus that I like, you know, 
Seamus is not afraid to let you hit him because he's not afraid to hit. He will hit you and he will hit you hard. And he's like, look, dude, hit me back. And Dolph, I've never seen him this snug before, ever. Because he's never had to face anybody that snug. Maybe Harper a little bit, but to a certain degree, Harper is not a quote-unquote snug fighter. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't go that far, but this is definitely a good match, and I definitely think... Maybe you won't go that far. I think Harper is a snug, snug, uh, has a snug, snug style, works, uh... But not to the extent of Sheamus. Hmm. Sheamus is a brawler. Yeah, true, true. And, uh, Sheamus, he ended up losing, but I think Ziggler definitely ended up losing. I thought he was going to tap out a clover league. That was a beautiful clover league. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, Ziggler won. What am I talking about? Yeah, Ziggler won. So, okay, so I have two, and Peter has one at this point. What do you mean, one? You got one because of the Dean Ambrose. And then the Barrett match is null and void. Oh, yeah. Oh, that one loss. I thought you said one loss. No, no, no. You got one point, one yeah. tally. And yeah, then, and, and, and then, yeah, it's just different. Yeah, he breaks out of a Cloverleaf. I thought he was going to tap out because it was a beautiful. It was and, beautiful. And he drug him back out. It was, it was a good yeah, match. Yeah, that Cloverleaf. I hated how it ended. I know that uh, I've probably been a proponent of Sheamus, and I'm sure a lot of people have, but he came back with more enthusiasm. I can definitely feel that Cloverleaf. Is pretty awesome. I mean, I guess you know I'm an old school WCW mark. So Demolinko, any any Demolinko pop is going to be a good pop for me. That move to me, I feel, is more devastating than the accolade. You going back? I mean, you're you're sitting on him. Yeah, you, well, you're turning a motherfucker yeah, upside hold, down. Holds are always, I would say, more uh, grueling. I guess you know they're. But the cloverleaf hold even more so than the sharpshooter stinger deathlock. I mean, like it is a brutal move. I mean, you're you're sitting adjacent almost. You're at a ninety degree angle. Not only are you sitting on their back, you got their legs at a fucking perpendicular angle. Angle, and you're sitting. I mean, the only thing it's a leg hold done with the guy on offense's arms, which is yeah. So rare. you lo- so unlike the stinger or stinger deathlock or the uh, uh, scorpion deathlock, scorpion deathlock or the. Um, Sharp shooter, shooter, figure four, it's leg Your, your arms forward. aren't as locked into the legs as they should. You're more, more, you're more, you're more attacking the lower back. That clover leaf, you're attacking the neck and the back. The only thing close to that is the lion tamer to a certain degree, oh, like a, a Boston crab. For sure. And and Jericho's had to modify that uh, in the WWE to uh, go on the side, which to me more devastating. Mm-hmm. I love a a a a. a oh. Ooh, lion tamer, like a real lion tamer. That is that hot shit. But and, um, and then we go into match of the but, but, night, but, match but, of the but, week. But 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 but, but oh. before we go, so the the match ends. I thought it was a botch roll up. I thought the way it ended was very weird. And I, if you go to my reactions, I'm like, oh, is this a botch? This is like the count of three on a roll up. Pay per view. Like, what the fuck is this about? Okay, Sheamus loses. He has to kiss Dolph Ziggler's ass. And Dolph Ziggler's a little too fucking happy to show his ass. It's a little too fucking playgirlish for it's me. The HBK of, you know, the Ric Flair. And yeah, that. you know, it's like chill out. This is about shame. It's not about you. Um, so Sheamus is pissed off. He wants. He's like, ring the bell. This ain't over yet. But he's he's come to the point where he has to fucking put up a shut up. He has to pay up. It's his it's his match. It's his match. It's his match. How can he lose his own match? He has to kiss Sheamus' ass, uh, Ziggler's ass. He, they drag it out just a little too long. But when he finally get down to uh, to finally do it, he gives him the low blow. And he steps off. He doesn't pay up for his extreme rules loss in a match that he decided in. Now, they didn't even play it off on Monday. It's just like, okay. Oh, this is a waste of everyone's time. Well, they kind of played it into it on Monday. There's, uh, there should have been someone I was like, you know what? You're going to kiss his ass right now. That's well, how they should have Well, yeah, they rubbed. Well, Ziggler did rub. Uh, yeah, but nah. Get his ass, his face rubbed in Sheamus' ass. Yeah. Which is, they showed a replay of it. and I mean, it wasn't, he didn't really kiss it, but he was kind of like a forehead into the ass. Yeah, but yeah, I, don't, yeah. I don't blame you. It wasn't only, a payoff. Yeah, you're only working. You know, don't do not do it. It don't. wasn't a pair. You should have got Vince McMahon out there to say, you better kiss this ass, damn it. <laughs> Get a tongue in there. Like, I'm just saying, that's the payoff. That's the match. That's his stipulation. 
So I don't know. I and I, the fact that the, the the stipulation wasn't fulfilled is a waste of everyone's time. That's my only hang up. That's why it's not as I don't, I don't grade this as high of a pay per view. This is one of the one of the things. I mean, I'm not gonna. I, whatever that match is, the stipulation is kind of weak to begin with. And then we had, in my opinion, the best match of the night, week, what have you. I know. Uh, I thought, ooh. Mm, okay. uh, New Day versus Ken Cesaro. This match was fucking fantastic. The, Jerry Lawler at the beginning said this could be a clin- This match could be put on as a clinic. It fucking was, man. Uh, Cesaro caught Big E from the top rope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like it was nothing. That was fucking sick. I mean, and then there was a great spot where a kid came in to the ring through Big E's legs, knocking Kofi out of the ring with a clothesline. Big E runs at him. He holds the top rope down, and then kid bounces off the you know the rope, not facing Big E and and Kofi, and dives through the middle and top rope to do a tope con hilo. Which is pretty amazing, pretty fluid, pretty awesome. I don't know if you saw that, but that was like reason to watch the pay per view right there. What do we, what do, we do? Flip? But do through the top rope. Oh yeah, through, yeah. The, through the middle and top. No one. I think everyone had really big spots in this, and I think both both these and this. You know, the conversation. I, I don't mean to go date back to the through the middle rope. Sorry. Um 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 um. Uh, Wade Keller, Stone Cold, but it's just Wade Keller is just a, such a smart dude. And both both him and uh, Stone Cold. I I'm looking forward to to pay per views just to go listen to them talk. Those guys just know how. They just whoo. The, the guys the, those guys are smart. But they have a podcast together. No, it's it's the Stone Cold. It's it's basically it's Steve Austin show. Yeah, yeah. But like since I think Survivor Series, he's hired Wade Keller to come in the day after and before Raw. And do a little show. And do, like, a, a review. That's and and cool. it's, like, the best. It's the You can listen to any podcast you want. You take a Hall of Fame, the guy who invented, like, yeah, wrestling yeah. journalism, and you take Stone Cold Steve Austin. Well, we killer didn't invent. There's he, he was one of the ones, dude. He was one of the it. ones. He was one of the ones. He was one of the guys that, that really Bill said. Bill Atner. But, nevertheless. Anyway, yeah, yeah. But well, you, take, you take a guy at his degree of wrestling journalism. And you take those two guys, and they come together, and they're really breaking down like a pay per view. It's something. It's something to listen to. It's something, man. Especially from a journalist who don't. They never really get along. Journalists and fucking wrestlers never get along. Those guys are like a fucking hand in the glove. But um, another great spot in the match was a, a deadlift suplex where uh, Cesaro was standing on the second rope, flipped Kofi all the way into the ring, and then Tyson Kidd hit him with the springboard elbow. But it wasn't enough. Kofi, Kofi Kingston held the ropes and pinned Ty- Tyson Kidd for the New Day to take home the belt. Those tights. Yeah, uh, it was kind of bullshit, but I do think that they are, they did just they did just turn the New Day heel, and I think they're turning Kidd and Cesaro face. So it's always better to have the faces chase, in my opinion. I think that this is gonna them and the Lucha Dragons is gonna be a nice three way tie title feud but with a lot of great wrestling. But it's weird. I I still have my I I, I like the new I ha, I like how the New Day thing got turned on its head and yes their heels, but like Kidd and Cesaro, this is not. This is not. This is not something where they were done dirty. The the new the the um. Kenneth Cesaro were not done dirty. They're the heels. You think they're the heels, Kenneth Cesaro? Well, I feel like Still? the only people who have beef, the people, the people who shall have the biggest beef with the New Day right now are fucking uh, Kalisto and and uh, Ken Sin Cara because they cheated. To get to the championship. But they cheated to win the championship. Well, how did they... Well, they didn't cheat. They, they didn't, held the tights. Well, it's a handful of tights. That's cheating. It's a pin. It's cheating. Handful of tights. How did Kid and Cesaro win the belt? Uh, I'm not sure. I forget it. Not clean. Uh, it was outside interference. I think... Um, who ended up getting the win? Uh, I think it was Cesaro who got the pin on Jay Uso. From outside interference from Kid, and it's like it's we it's just a weird dynamic. There's no reason why the dynamic of of the heel and the face is really obvious in this. It's there's no obvious face here. It's just the fact that okay, we got these dudes over here, right? And we're we're turning them. 
So I guess who's ever in the ring with them is going to have to do the babyface job. Um, it's just weird. And this was a, a, a couple of matches um, in this that actually expressed the same thing. Um, there's no reason for Ken and Cesaro to be faces in this. I mean, they're getting cheered in the... In that match. There was no reason. No, they're getting cheered all around. The yeah, country. because they like them. I like them because they're cool. When they come out, the, 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 big, the big... Oh, you like Ken Cesaro. Yeah, I do. I, 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 like, I like... No, no, no. I, actually, scratch that. This is all imagination. The actual match, the tag team champion match was the Ascension versus New Day versus Ken Cesaro versus um, uh, Los Matadores. It, all the tag team, primetime players, they even brought back uh, Jared Show to face the Ascension. Ascension won, and they're the new tag team champions. Well, they brought back the Midnight Express. They all went up against fucking... Uh, Peter's Peter's mind, Peter's imagination. No, 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 no. They all went up against the Ascension, and they lost. I, mean, I don't know what you were watching. <laughs> No, but like I, it, the, the psychology of them is just—it it was weird. I, I, it, it's off. It was completely off because there was no, there was no determined heel. Now that we solidified the new day to have their turn because it's the, because the crowd turned on them. This is not what the WWE expected, and now they have to run with it. It works. I'm happy with it. But to say all of a sudden that Ken and Cesaro are now faces when nothing's wrong happened to them, I think it's weird. Well, I think something did happen. I mean, they got cheated out of a... Uh... No, that's you. Don't do this. They they had a handful of tights. That's not... But that's not like... And, but they that's, lost, and that team, New Day... You know, but that's not anything close to, say... This, it, it, it's not a reason to turn somebody. Like, the fact that... The fact that... um. The fact that Naomi went and fucked up Paige after she lost that Divas Battle Royal is a reason for Paige to be pissed off at Naomi. I get all that, but I'm just saying, uh, I know there's a lack of storyline there, but that's no, uh, that's that's just how it looks like it's happening. If you watch the match, Tyson and Ken Cesaro definitely played faces. They had face spots the whole time, where as the New Day had like little cheating spots, especially with Xavier Woods. They didn't have a lot of cheating spots. They didn't. Held the ties, and then they cheated on Raw, too, I believe. But they didn't have cheating. The only cheating spot, the, and if you call a handful of tights a cheating spot, that that, cheating. then it was the it was only the pin. It wasn't during the match. Didn't Xavier Woods get involved? No, not at all. Yeah, well, they showed us a new day in the back, and they did, like, you know, their, their interview. It was it was okay. And then the, the what we were talking about earlier, the SUV pulls up. Harper falls out. Xavier Woods is hilarious here. Saying all this stuff, you know, it's like, oh, you're still getting your ass whooped. And then Dean jumps off the top of the car, pins Harper. And then that's how uh, we both got our our mark for Dean Ambrose. Yeah, and yeah, they come back to the ring. There's a spot, well, the big spot was the more ECW shit, where they tossed the chairs in. It just turned into a chair tossing into the ring moment. And they tossed the chair, and they tossed the chair, and they threw every, every chair that was... They took Michael Cole's chair. They took the Spanish announce table chair. They all threw it in the fucking ring. And they piled up, and then they went into the fucking ring. And um, Luke Harper ended up getting the upper hand uh, with a suplex off of the uh, second top second rope into the chairs. He piled the chairs on top of Dean Ambrose. And he was going to go up to the top rope to finish the job. But Dean Ambrose bust out of the chairs. He fucking tosses him on top of the chairs and hits him with the dirty deeds, but not on a chair. I don't know. Dirty deeds is just a devastating move, dude. There was a million DDTs in this pay per view. <laughs> Why that one won and not? And I mean, I'm thinking he's gonna land him on a chair. You got 50 chairs in the ring. And you find the one open spot to give Dirty Deeds to and then get the pen? Oh, it was weird. And then we moved on to Cena versus Rusev, U.S. title match for the in the Russian chain match. I really thought this was a kind of a new style of Russian chain match because uh, they had the lights, which I think is really good for an arena setting. Well, they did that in the strap match. They did that with the um, the Irish strap match with uh, Sheamus versus uh, Mark 
Mark Henry. Oh, they did. They put and they put the little fucking lights out there. I think the lights, and as cheesy as it is, but I mean, it's seen a Rusev feud. This is a cheesy feud, and I think it works better for the people in the balcony to not be able to like, oh, did he touch that turnbuckle? Oh, did he touch that turnbuckle? Which I think adds to the suspense. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I think. Uh, well, no, no, no. Take away those fucking dumbass lights. No, I think the lights add to the suspense, especially at the end there where you saw them, they all, it was pretty much a boring match. It was I, horrible. I watched it with a few non-wrestling fans and they were definitely like talking about how they're like, no, the tag match, the Harper and D match, they were like, that was exciting. That's the kind of stuff I like. I think they kept saying that. They're like, that's the kind of wrestling I like. This was a so step. this match was real slow. Real, real slow. I, it, it, there was no real suspense to it, honestly. And, and plus, the well, way that... The the, the, right the, 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 cool. the, 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 chain was too long, for one, for my taste. Chain was too long. Uh, there was a spot where Cena's, like, outside, and he stops Rusev from hitting, like, the last buckle. Yeah. But he doesn't reel the chain in. He just kind of gets inside the ring. And Rusev is like pretending that he can't get to it. And I was like, wait a minute. He didn't reel in the chain. He's not stopping Rusev from... He's a big badass. He can just fucking like yank his ass and touch the last turnbuckle. I just felt like it was a space holder. Out of all the great matches we've seen between... The two great matches we've seen between both... Cena and Rusev say what happened at WrestleMania and say what even happened at yeah, Fastlane. Dude, I mean, they were great matches. And then we're stuck with like this half ass gimmick match. This, what could have been awesome because like there's one spot where, and, and I even, like, I was like, what? Where Rusev, I'm thinking, oh shit, shit's about to get real. He reels up the, the chain. Yeah. And he punches him in the stomach. I mean, there's a lot of uh, organs up in there, man. But that one is a thing called a face. <laughs> I know. I'm just, I'm just fucking around. I was just fucking around. I, I just go. I, this is. Yeah, this is this I think. Uh, I mean, Hitchcock talked about it. I'm sure a lot of other podcasts talked about it. like how they got the Russian chain match over, how they got the leather strap match over, how they got the cage match over originally was blood. That's how they did it, and they're not going to do that anymore unless it's anymore. The, unless it's the hard way. So I know that that might be. You might like that. I mean, I'm not. I'm not necessarily for for blood and wrestling, but uh, I do think that it adds to the suspense in those matches back in the day. But also, it it brought things to an end. I mean, to a halting end. Yeah. Like this is this is it. Yeah. When I'm gonna whoop chain your ass. match, cage match. It's it's this is this is box office shit right here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We're breaking down the hammer. And there was like this sense of excitement, and we're not excited anymore. Um, one spot in in this um, where, because Lana's getting over because she's hot, and the crowd is screaming, "We want Lana!" Of course. And uh, she gets up on the fucking apron, and she waves to the crowd, and it distracts Rusev, and uh, he sends her ass to the back. I think it was just a, uh, a way to. Further the storyline with her because remember at Mania she got knocked off the apron. She took a bump. And then that's then this this pay per view she sends him to the back. Or well, he sends her to the back rather. Well, what's been happening is the crowd has been getting more into the existence of Lana, and it what they're trying to do right here in this this thing is okay before she was like the one calling the shots, and now you get like Rusev bullying her a little bit. I'm not bullying her, but he's insecure. I think it's gonna get. I think, I think last year was the story about Rusev being a badass. Now this is gonna be the story. Of, this year's his the, insecurity. Yeah, this year's gonna be the story of Rusev and Lana. They're, they could probably get a year out of it. He's a fragile man, mm-hmm. but he's also a big man. Yeah. And the fact that people are looking at his woman and acknowledging her existence and her responding to that. It's bothering him because I'm I am here for you, not these people, not these filthy Americans. Me. Why are you giving these people your attention? You don't like these people, so I don't know. It, it makes for a strange dynamic. Cena seems to be an advancement. You know, he's advancing their story. Yeah, why not? I mean, I, I I've said before I love how he's kind of going down the car but still got his role in the show yeah my last build on this bad match 
Cena wins, I, I don't even care. Like, this is this should have never happened. That's two matches that's just, like, wasting my time. And, yeah, Roman Roman Reigns promo in the back. Not really worth mentioning too much about that. I didn't even write anything down about Yeah, and then we had Nikki versus Naomi. Naomi comes out, new music, uh, glowing boots, uh... Two heels kind of here. In the Again, game. yep. Yeah, it was a weird dynamic. The same with the new dance, Kenneth is on. They gave him a lot of time here. He gave and, him eight minutes. And they did a lot of, well, I guess not a lot of time, but they gave him a normal amount of time, which is a lot for divas, I guess, nowadays. Uh, there was some several good moves. Uh, sp- a split-legged moonsault done by Naomi. Bree, no, sorry, Naomi dominated this entire match. Yeah, she killed it. There she was- dominated the entire match. Was, she showed her athletic ability. She showed her wrestling ability. It wasn't like her just doing hot spots. It was just her looking superior in the ring. There was one spot where Nikki did shine where she jumped on one side of the corner on the middle rope and then the second the second leap got her to the top rope and then she spun her own kick AJ Styles esque. Yeah, yeah, that was a nice spot, especially for Nikki. I know everyone talks about how Nikki's improving. That's the first time I really saw it, and that split like moonsault, like I mentioned earlier, was really good by Naomi. But it really took a while to get to those spots. I feel like, but I think over time that's gonna patch up really nice. And uh, the heel and they and they won in a heelish way. Yeah, uh, yeah. There, there's a moment where they're out, they split outside. And Naomi just jacks Brie. Well, Brie kicks her, right? Yeah, he's just, uh, no, Naomi just. But but what? Why? Why the retaliation? Because when when it spilled outside, Naomi just 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 jaw jacks Brie. Like fuck out of here, because she's tended to her sister. Fuck out of here, yeah, right? Yeah. And they he drags her back into the ring, and then there was a point where they ran the ropes. She ends up on the rope on the second rope, and. Brie retaliates by kicking her, which led to the rack attack, which seals the victory for Nikki. That's what I said in my bold prediction. It would be win from... But but they're the baby faces now. and Which is kind of weird, because just like you talked about Kid and Cesaro, I really feel like it's with the Bellas. Because, I mean, especially Nikki, she turned on her sister, and for some reason Brie's back with her, but they didn't do anything to make us not like them. Or, how about or the like more, them? How about the more recent storyline between the two of them, where she's been facing people, especially Naomi, where uh, <laughs> Nikki's just like, yeah, that sucks. Where she's getting her ass handed to, her, like just beat down, beat beat down. She doesn't do any distractions, no nothing. She doesn't do anything to aid her sister to help her win. But Bree is doing everything to help Nikki win. For instance, this championship uh, defense. No Brie kick to the side of the face. Yeah, and then she wouldn't have been able to hit the rack yeah. attack for the victory. And and, and it spilled over in uh, it spilled over in Raw. Well, we'll same get to that. We'll get to the that. same happened where it's like, well, you win in a heelish way, but you still get the baby face pop. It's just she gets the baby face pop. Oh man, this yeah. Brie got the fucking heel pop. I mean, the the baby face pop. Uh, that go home show. Oh, we're no, the I go home were, show. I'm I just saying. Talking about this, what we're talking. About. Yeah, yeah, but like last Monday when 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 Bree faced Naomi, she got the baby face pop, and and Naomi was getting the heel, the heel heat. Um, this match, uh, Nikki is getting the baby face pop, and Naomi's getting the heel heat. They win in a heelish way, outside interference. And everyone cheers. Yay, Nikki! Uh, I mean, I didn't. I don't know. I was just kind of glad this match was over. I guess I didn't really pay that much attention. And in the back, Rusev was yelling at Lana, and Lana was, uh, uh, you know, just taking it. And she, they show her just going to the office of the authority, and then they kind of tease what they were doing there. And then uh, we go into the Big Show Roman Reigns match. What you think of this match, Peter? The big spots, it was a spot fest. Um, I love, what I like the most is the psychology of Big Show. I liked his psychology and how he approached this. And this is why I like Big Show. Big Show is a professional. He was really good in this match. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to tell the story in the ring. Not even if he's hitting, but just at his, the fact that who he is as a giant. 
um, when he was playing off, I don't need this shit. I'm a giant. Like, that's great. Now, I don't know if this match did Roman Reigns any more favors. I think this show, this 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 match helped show more than anything. Well, that's just because people can see. Veterans know what to do. He was playing to the crowd, and it was really awesome how uh, last few weeks, you know, especially at the Raw After Mania and the Raw in London, we've been getting please retire chants. And I think that's really unfair for the big show. But then tonight in Chicago, well, you know, a, a usually like snarky crowd we got like you still got it chance you know real positive reaction i think he he wasn't trying to play off it too much but you can t- you could see in his face that he loved it and he was you can see him picking up his momentum and his enthusiasm but this was definitely a pro reigns crowd too at the same time you, because i think they were born in, it was like a borderline be like well the rest of the snarks are bitching at show to retire so let's just give him the hill heat because that's what everyone well, else is isn't normally in the all state arena because these look real small well it's it normally reigns gets heat you know he gets heat because it's like okay you're forcing us down our throat he didn't get so much in the chicago crowd like i didn't hear a bunch of boos I didn't hear. I didn't. They were kind of quiet, comparatively speaking. I think Green Bay was way more enthusiastic the night after. Mhm. I think. I just feel like people are really. My only problem with it is he still doesn't wrestle. That's my thing about Reigns. He still doesn't wrestle. Like it's just big spot after big spot. Because he's not that. No, he's not at all. Good yet. He's not at all. But you know what? And this is a this is a conversation we're gonna have in the Raw review, where I was right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they the big spot set up where they had steps on the side from ra- oh, rails. That's, that's spot number two, dude. That's spot number two. <laughs> oh, I thought, well, yeah, go talk. What uh, the, the big spot was the uh, choke slam because Big Show, first, he's every time Reigns is grabbing something, he's breaking it or throwing it away. He's like, I don't need this stuff. Why are you coming? Which I was thought, I thought the psychology was weird. It's like, why is he coming off as so weak to having to use stuff to knock him down? Big Show's like, no, nah, I don't need this shit. I'm going to break this shit. I'm going to toss it out. He broke the kendo stick. He broke the table. Like, I don't need this shit. I'm a giant. But he brings out two tables. He lines them up. He sets them up side by side, which led to a spot where he eats two Superman punches. Bam! I'm like, God, he always eats him. Stop hitting him with the Superman punch. Hits him once, hits him twice. He's about to go for a third. Fucking catches him in the yoke. And he drops his ass onto the two tables sitting outside. That was awesome. And it was safe. I mean, it hurt. But it landed perfectly. He landed perfectly on those two tables. And he got up and he was in the ring. He sold it real good. Uh, he gets back in the ring at a nine count, and that's it, it. Was it more than the barricade because we've seen the barricade before? He did it with Mark Henry. But I wasn't talking about the barricade. I was talking about where they laid up the steps. He ran up the steps on the table. The the finish. Oh, the finish. The finish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, and we had never seen that. I've never seen that move before. His uh, his relative did the spot where he ran across three tables to do the splash onto John Cena in Royal Rumble 2008, I believe. But this is the first time I saw where they lined up the steps for him to run up the steps onto the table. To the Big Show lined them up, which was even more ironic. Yeah, to, then yeah, to his, for him to spear Big Show. And I was like, why is he setting ta- it up? Yeah, through the, through the table. And then he flips the table on top of him, and that's how he wins the last man standing match. Uh, that was definitely an over spot. I thought like Big Show was legitimately hurt there because he's holding the knee and he or he's holding his leg. He wasn't getting up. And I was watching it with a few people, and they they were swearing that he was hurt. But well, it's a lot of weight coming down. I just and, he, thought, and he came down on a, on a chair too. Yeah. He broke the table. It was pretty pretty sick. It was intense. I mean, and then we had a special a bonus match. Uh, Bo. Bo. No, yeah, I didn't even. I didn't even. Bonus. That's 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 pretty awesome. Uh. Yeah, Bo Dallas versus Ryback, pretty much a squash match. We're talking about this is uh, Raw on a pay per view. That was sur- that was main event superstars on a pay per view right there. Uh, Ryback wins, pretty much a yeah, big squash match. It was Just- it was it wasn't a match. It wasn't a match at all. 
<laughs> it was Bo Dallas talking shit, and and uh, Ryback just came and hurt him. Uh-huh. That no no bell ring, no nothing. It was just a spot. It was just a spot to uh, get Bo Dallas out there um, to talk shit, heal it up to the Chicago crowd, and Ryback just comes in and just squashes him. There was yeah. no pin. Like, I think yeah, it was really for Ryback to shine here. Yeah. And uh, in the back, they had uh, Lana announced that the authority gave her permission to do Cena versus Rusev in an I Quit match. So, uh, you know, I've always liked an I Quit match. But I quit this feud. <laughs> I, mean, I uh, quit. I quit. I mean, it's been going since the fucking Royal Rumble. Like, whatever. I don't know, man. I'm pretty... I'm, I'm soaked on it, man. Uh, I think this is a good old school feud. I think they're going to do some cool I Quit matches. I think the I Quit match is going to stand out on the Payback pay-per-view, whereas all these stipulation matches didn't really stand out on Extreme Rules, like they kind of do every year. And then we go into the main event, which uh, it was... You know, Rollins versus Orton in a cage match. Horrible. No RKO, I thought, by either man. And, of course, Corporate Kane as a special gatekeeper. This is a horrible match. This is the, probably the worst cage match I've ever seen in my fucking life. Yeah. Horrible. Horrible. It was horrible. Like, there was no usage. It was, like, next to no usage of the uh, actual steel cage. Um, and this ultimately ended up about Kane. There was no suspense. We all know that it was going to come down to what Kane was to decide. Um, once the uh, suplex off the uh, top of the cage kick out, I go, just we're waiting for Kane, bro. I was waiting for Bray to show up. Um, yeah, yeah, that's what you said, and that was pretty interesting. Uh, I thought, like, they did the, the slamming the head on the door spot like they normally do, but this was the first time it took, or the first time I can remember... It took both of them out, so both opponents were down for that. It was a really nice buckle bomb. This, this annoyed me. Yeah, uh, it was an alright match. So, yeah, Rollins ended up winning if he didn't know before. This was not about Rollins? Well, he, he did win. I'm just and he went with a, a Rollins KO? Yeah, which I thought was kind of like getting yourself out of a stipulation there in the first place. It was a cage match where people climbed in, even though you had Kane who was supposed to be the guy that was supposed to stop people, he was one of the ones in there. And second of all, the next dip was there's no RKOs, and then here's a guy doing an RKO. So pretty much the things that they told us they were going to give us that were supposed to make the match special, they built the whole match into taking it away. There was nothing about this to scream cage. This was a match inside of a cage. This was not a cage match. <laughs> and we're all waiting for... This is, this is all about Kane. This was all about Kane. You got Randy Orton, you got Seth Rollins, and a cage match. And it's all about fucking Kane. Of all people, Kane. Now, I love the fucking storyline that they have with him and him trying to come to grips with who he is as a, as a man, as a, as a wrestler, as a demon. And, but he's still a dude in a suit. And he's... He is... It boiled down to him. That's insane. That's just, it's a really insane thing to think. And it didn't come to a close because he hits him with an RKO. They follow up on the fucking show the fact that this has, this, this has to be corrected, which results in what we're probably, we're going to end up talking about. But man, this, this, I, I'm normally really positive about pay per views. I feel like they always kind of work themselves out. But like the dynamics, the dynamics between Ambrose and how they didn't film them fighting in the streets and how they uh, tried to sync everything up as a Raw episode. The fact that uh, fucking Ziggler and Sheamus was like a like a roll up. The fact that the, the New Day are all of a sudden like the, I mean, uh, Kenneth Cesar are all of a sudden all these like baby face, like reluctant baby faces. How Naomi loses to some heel is shit and still gets the heel heat how fucking Cena and, and Rusev's match was it's bore so fucking boring I, it, it, I, I'm so positive about pay-per-views this was a waste of my time like I, it, it, I, I wish and I it, which even funny because I got them all right too yeah. It, it was a waste of my time. It's always and a balance, folks. The yin yang of yin yang of life. The 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 fact that New Day won, I like that, and it was a great match, awesome match. Yeah, my that's the reason to watch the pay per view. 
the big spots between uh, uh, between um, Reigns and Big Show and Big Show's performance. Great. I mean, that was awesome. Seeing Naomi really display herself as a dominant diva really, really was really good. Um, what enough? I, I, the Harper Ambrose didn't disappoint. You know, it didn't, but like they just dropped the ball on what they could have done creatively with that and them leaving the building. So, yeah, I give it a five. Again, it, it, I give it a five. There was things about it that didn't make it a fucking four. <laughs> it was things about it that didn't make it above, uh, make it a six. So, I, I, yeah, yeah. Well, then we go into Raw, Green Bay. The next night, real hot crowd. Um... I would, yeah, I said before, hotter than, uh, hotter Holy than shit, did we talk 54 minutes about fucking extreme rules? Yes, sir, we did. And, uh, they go into this King of the Ring vignette to kick off the show, and then Rollins comes out, immediate heat, you suck, Chance, uh, and then he says that he did the SKO, and he was really happy about that. Kane came out, he said that he was the Crypt Keeper, and he said, oh, I'm sorry, that's an old 90s relic that no one cares about. That's not you, you know, kind of playing under that. And that's when, uh, that's when Kane calls him the Justin Bieber of, uh, of the WWE, which gets a big chant, uh, you know, Justin Bieber chants. Or Randy comes out somehow in the mix of that. Or Reigns comes out somehow in the mix of that. And then Kane pretty much says that he's going to let the WWE Universe pick what the uh, main event of Payback is. Is it going to be... Rollins, Rollins versus Orton is it going to be Rollins versus Reigns or is it going to be Orton versus Reigns versus Rollins so obviously everyone's going to pick the three way that was kind of a setup by the WWE and then he also announces the main event for t- that Monday Night Raw at Green Bay which would have been Kane and Rollins versus Orton and Reigns uh, as the main event but it was a big first round of the King of the Ring uh out of the blues, King of the Fucking Ring. We there was no build up to this. It's like, oh boom, I, oh yeah, King of the Ring. Hey, it's King of the Ring. W- what I thought was funny about that first segment is like how Seth Rollins gets in. He talks about how he was a fighting champion and how he beat Orton all by himself. He's really selling the idea. That was the hill he he was trying to get. The fact that he like he's bragging about how he did it all by myself. I did it all by myself, and that's when Kane, you know, issue Kane. And that, you know, then everything you you know he you hit everything on the head. Um, I hate how Reigns came out no cell Reigns. Oh yeah, I mean Big Show sold. He wasn't even on the show, and uh, I think Rollins did not need to even get any heat. He was getting booed out the building before they got there, and they just needed that little spark of that Justin Bieber call out. I thought it was lame. That was so lame. I don't I don't like that. I didn't like it. Um, like I don't get it. Like okay, like you're the Justin Bieber. It's like. You're the Justin Bieber of... I think we're putting Kale... Uh, Kane insults go get put on a scale. Like, that wouldn't have been good for a Dean Ambrose or a Roddy Piper. But Kane, you know, he doesn't really get to you know, be that funny too often. So I'll give it to Kane. But, yeah, it was it was okay. I just like... How about somebody more relevant? I'm, I, I'm, I'm really not relevant. Like, you're the K-Fed. You know what I mean? They're not relevant, but just something, just something else. Like, you're the... Yeah, there's something else like. Well, K Fed has been in WWE. I, I know, I know, I, but yeah, like just someone who doesn't deserve anything. Like you're like a, a Kim Kardashian, you know. Like at least Justin Bieber actually worked his ass off to get to the top. Yeah. Kim Kardashian done nothing. They could have did Bruce Jenner. Oh boy, and then, that would have uh, been deep. The, the <laughs> first, uh, the first match uh, of the King of the Ring tournament. Can we talk about this first? How do you feel that there's all of a sudden this is King of the Ring tournament? Oh, uh, they said it on the pay per view and one day build up. Um, I mean, I always liked the King of the Ring. They haven't done it in a number of years, so I guess I didn't even think about the way you're thinking about it. I was just like, "Fuck yeah, okay, cool." Like I just like went with it like right away. So like I really wasn't even thinking about it like you. I mean, I be- I agree with what you're saying. I wish there was a build up. And uh, maybe next year we'll have it as a pay-per-view because I, I definitely saw a lot of hype online about it. I definitely like the tournament style. But um, this whole thing is just to sell the network. What because the, isn't the, isn't the finals or something going to be on a network or something? It's not going to be. It on already th- happened. It took the place of main event Tuesday night. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess now I guess uh, you didn't. No, I have no idea. Well, 
I think me and me and Fritz were gonna talk about that on uh, Fashion in the World this week, and I can tell you what happened. I don't. I don't care about. You can spoil me on this shit. Well, I don't want to spoil the people. I want them to tune in fast. No, bear one. Oh wow. Yeah, bear one. Uh, beat Neville. So this is a feud between the two of them. It's a really good match. You should, if you can find it, if you can find, if you can get the network. I haven't even somehow. seen the first bear. I haven't even seen the first bear. Um, I didn't see the first bear Neville match in the first place. Oh, dude. I know. I know. I, I just haven't gotten around to do it. Peter's got some catching up to do. I'd be alright. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Well, you can just tell me. I mean, it I don't was, have to see the match. It was good. It was good, man. Uh, Ziggler versus Barrett, though. A lot of two counts, a lot of back and forth. But then, of course, Sheamus comes out and distracts him. And then that's when uh, Barrett hits him with the bull hammer. Bad news, Barrett. Quick match, good match. Good way to start the tournament. Uh, not really much to it, though. Just you know. Why is Sheamus coming out with a distraction? He got the upper hand on Ziggler. All he did was lose the match. With like yeah, like a BS roll up. Yeah, you're right. Uh, like all he did was win the match. Distraction he, roll up. He didn't. He didn't follow up to his stipulation. If anything, I'm I'm not showing my face. I'm ashamed that I'm not living up to my own shit. I'm not showing up. You know, it'd have been real funny if Ziggler came out, like looked at the crowd, and like opened up a little chapstick or something, and like put on like something, you know, or, like was brushing his teeth when he came down to the ramp or something funny, you know, just to play up that he did. Have his face rubbed in another man's ass. He got his, right. a- but not, but he had his ass handed to him. He got like fucked up after he got low blowed. He got bro kicked. I mean, like viciously. And now he's coming out to fuck with Ziggler. Like, why is he fucking with Ziggler? He got the upper hand. This is true. Um, I mean, Barrett gets the win. Whatever. I. The fact that he won King of the Ring doesn't really serve any real purpose. Well, we'll get, yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's just a, kind of a cool tournament. I just like the tournament style. Uh, they do tournaments a lot in Japan. They do tournaments a lot on TNA. You don't treat uh, this shit seriously, I'm not going to take it seriously. And it's that simple. Well, we'll see where they go with the following weeks. I sound like such a mark today, man. I, I don't know what it is. Maybe, maybe I got some bad beer in my system. I don't know. But I'm a, I'm a negative Nancy today, dude. You are, dude. You are. It sucks. I, I'm you... sorry. And I apologize for it. I've turned heel. I think that's what I've done. I've turned. I've turned on everyone. Well, this Tyson Kid Big E match was real quick, but I loved it. I loved it. I'm pissed that Xavier Woods shaved his heel beard. I he thought, had the I Ivan. Thought that was awesome. dude, I thought it was weird. I was like, what? He had the Ivan Koloff, like, little, like, shave the front of the beard, but then keep the bottom. It was, like, a nice little line. It was, like, heel beard. But then he went clean shave. He went clean shave. Yeah, I mean. I was like, this is interesting. Yeah. Um, but then Tyson Kidd was stomping Big E to the tune of New Day Sucks, mm-hmm. which was kind of, you know, good, good little heat there. Uh, Woods ends up cheating for Big E, so Big E can get the win. This wasn't, this wasn't much of a match. Yeah. I mean, say coming off... Coming off, um, it was just meant to extend the feud, I think, a little bit. And uh, maybe. and Woods Woods held the held the boot. So this yeah. is the third third uh, time in a row here. Last week's were all at the pay per view, and now we've seen New Day cheat a little bit. And then they lift Big E up with both the belts, and they can barely hold him at the top yeah. of the ramp. New Day, uh, I feel like this is like a tag team rejuvenation right here because the Lucha Dragons are awesome. Uh, the New Day, even though they suck, they're awesome. And uh, Ken Cesaro, of course, are probably the best tag team well now we have a real we have a real they have a reason to be upset now they never they didn't they didn't have a reason to be upset before i mean that's their tactics yeah um this wasn't much of a match i wish you would have given it more time now we didn't even get to talk about like in the extreme rules like the moment of the night of extreme rules was cesaro and his his hot tag that was probably one of the best hot tags in the past five years. Like, he goes in, dude, and he just runs shot. I mean, this guy is awesome. Like, he's great. He was fucking catching motherfuckers, doing those German uppercuts. Uppercuts. I mean, like, it's best in the business. I said, I said, Kalisto was, but ain't no fucking hot tag as hot as Cesaro. Hands down. The only thing that ruined it was Kid showing up that. Take away his spot, the big swing spot. With the fucking kick? That makes a, that makes that spot, dude. Let the, let him have his moment. Swing that fucker around. Let the crowd count. But that's not what. One, that. two, get twenty-five. That's what I said. That's uh. That's... 107, 108. 
This is how a tag team is doing, man. Oh, man, and dude. It's more it could have been. It could have been. I think JBL even said it in the paper. He said the, the kick at the end makes it. And I agree with him. I think the crowd counting. Now, if you really want to get these fuckers over as baby faces, let the crowd count. Let the crowd count. That is a that is a baby face move. They'll get over baby face just by how good they are. By going against. He jumps through the 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 middle and top rope to do the tope uh, cone hilo. I mean, they're great wrestlers. I'm not taking anything away from them being Smooth great wrestlers. Smooth as fuck. I'm not taking anything away from them, but they've been Smooth. conniving. They've been conniving the entire fucking time they've been tag team. But here's uh, the question we've all been waiting for next. Uh, Ryback versus Bo Dallas. We were like, here we go again. Our ugly side was, here we go again from the pay-per-view. Another squash match, which is exactly what happened. And then all of a sudden, Bray shows up. But that up. wasn't a match, though, at Extreme Rules. Well, what have you. Another another squash uh, uh, confrontation. And then all of a sudden, Bray Wyatt comes out. And just, your sister Abigail's. Out of nowhere. And then poses over top of him. I'm pretty excited. This is the first legitimate, nice mid-card feud for no belt in, that they've had in a month or two. But I put a huge question mark over this. Huge. Because I thought it was like, oh yeah, oh, I guess he was talking about right back all along. But then it's like, what? Later, right? But we'll get there. Cena does the open challenge. And finally, Slater gets his opportunity from last week. He's, he, he's, he's finished... His bo- after his RKO, he finished his bowl of fucking salad. And he finally goes out there and he's fucking just cheesing it up for the Chicago crowd that he's going to be the U.S. States Champion of the World. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was the greatest. I want to be the United States Champion of the World. <laughs> and, I, I, you know, he goes in. Well, well he doesn't go in. He's just... Stays out there, he's yappy yapping, and then Rusev basically destroys him. He kicks him, he beats him down, he throws him off the fucking. So he was in the back last week, he got to the top of the ramp this week. Maybe he might make the bottom of the ramp. Maybe. Stay tuned to Raw. Stay tuned to SmackDown. Get the network. Stay tuned to SmackDown. <laughs> and maybe he'll make it down the fucking ramp. But, um. Authority in the back. That's but, what I- Wait a minute. Um, and then, um, what happens is Lana comes out at the. He crushes uh, Slater, and the crowd just pops for Lana. Just, ah, Lana, we want Lana. And then she's, like, addressing the fact that she's getting attention, and Rusev sends her ass back to the back. And then we had the authority in the back here. What do you think of that, Peter? That's all I really wrote down. Oh, well, I I mean... It's it's a, it's a thing that we saw already. It's just like okay, uh, Kane had okay. Kane looks like he's not in the favor of Rollins, and Rollins in the back bitching at him about it. Yeah. It's like well, you know, like how dare you give the crowd a choice, you know? <laughs> and then we find out what this what is going to be because at first it was just like well, there's going to be a decision made, and then you'll find out. And then here he tells you what it's going to be, whether it's going to be Orton or Reigns or Triple Threat, and. Um, but he's already put it out there for the crowd to decide through um, the WWE app. Yeah, and I, I mean, this is obviously set up like, would you rather see him or him or both? Like, who's going to pick one or the other? You know what I'm saying? Like, like 4% did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and later on, you know, you find out. Like, but, like, come on. Like, get, don't. Are you going to Are you going to see the match you've seen twice on the last two pay-per-views? Are you going to see... The match that we've given you on SmackDown and Raw before Mania, or are you going to see a brand new match with a new dynamic in a three-way? I mean, of course you're going to pick a three-way. They kind of set it up. They probably had already written that they're going to be in a three-way. They just kind of did this little thing to carry on while you watch the show. Yep. And Rollins doesn't deserve a shot. I, I mean, not Rollins. Reigns still doesn't deserve a shot at the championship. Well, you can argue that Orton just lost, but then Reigns deserves it because he just won the I, the last man standing match. That he lost, it was a controversial loss. He the RKO is banned. This is why this this match is even happening because he oh, used an illegal move. Yeah. Okay. It was the, not the SKO. It's the RKO still. It's the Rollins KO. Yeah, of course. Yeah. The Rollins. That's cool. Well, isn't it the Randy? Now you have to be this. Yeah. Yeah. Rollins KO. I mean, I use the RKO of my own. Get it, Rollins? Cause that was slapstick. 
Yeah, and then uh, the second match of the uh, of the King of the Ring tournament, R Truth and Stardust. Uh, you know what you what you think? I used to be so excited about Stardust. I used to be so excited about Stardust. He's like so obscure right now, and then you have R Truth and uh, R Truth gets on my fucking nerves. Oh. I thought it was hilarious how Booker T compared Stardust to uh, Muhammad Ali and both of them changing their names and how you gotta respect it. If once one changes their name, you gotta, once an athlete changes their name like that, you gotta respect it like Cassius Clay and Muhammad Ali. I, I feel like that was a play on Floyd Mayweather. I feel like that, because he made a reference to promote the fight that he has with Pacquiao. Oh, he, 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 he compared himself to Muhammad Ali. Oh, see, I didn't know that. So I guess that's kind of funny. Uh, I just, I just thought it was hilarious how, you know, comparing something dumb as Stardust. To yeah, Muhammad to something as great as... But then, no, Stardust isn't dumb. I love Stardust, but I don't love him as much as I used to because it, all the char- all the charm is gone. It's gone because they sucked it out of him. Yeah, he's not really winning a lot of matches. He lost here uh, to the lie detector. R-Truth hits. When the last time that R-Truth went to the lie detector? He hit, he hit Harper. Who did he face last week? I, I think he faced... Who did he... He faced Bray Wyatt again, right? I think it was SmackDown. He had lost. He hits him with the lie detector. He goes for the pin. I was like, what? A, I haven't seen him hit that move in, like, months. Like, almost a year. Years. And now he hits it, and he wins with it? The fuck? It's weird. There's a lot of uh, matches on this Raw. I think there's more backstage segments on the pay-per-view than there was on Raw. It means uh, these matches meant absolutely nothing. I mean, I was thinking about it, and I'd rather see a bad match than a good backstage segment. I'm, a, I'm a, I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm in the uh, outlier minority of this, but I, I just think it's just a lack of uh, superstars, guys I care about. I think it's really hitting a fan, you know, especially with Daniel Bryan out, and the fact that they're focusing the shows around Kane and well, of and, all people and, and Big it, Show. This next match is a case in point of what you're saying. Fandango versus Adam Rose. Um, uh, so, Brie Bella... <sighs> we just skipped this motherfucker, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah that's cool. Fuck that. Like, well, Rosa what, Mendez was, was, was... What are we advancing here? What does this have to do with anything? Nothing. There's nothing involved in this yeah. whatsoever. Yeah, Brie Bella promo. Uh, Naomi face watches her like hockey fight style. But she's doing the sympathetic baby face thing. She's like, oh, my husband. Like, all this entire time, this entire time that uh, fucking uh, Daniel Bryan's been hurt, you've been healing it up with your sister. Right? Just healing it up with your sister. Yeah. And now he's hurt again. And now all of a sudden you're the sympathetic baby face. It just makes no sense to me. And fucking Naomi comes in, just no one gives a fuck about your goddamn husband, basically. And I just go like, yeah, you should be upset. You should be more upset at Brie because you know what Brie just did? Brie cost you the belt. As a baby face. Yeah. It's just mind-blowing to me. And also, we'll talk later, but I have my qualms about like, um, the idea of the the face diva, no, so I did the the the, the heel diva. We we'll talk about it afterwards. Like me and you? Yeah, no, no, no like we we'll, oh, we'll yeah. just drop, we we'll drop because I feel like the divas right now, like the, the what's happening with the divas is very interesting. It's a very interesting thing. It's finally interesting, especially with the dyna- the dynamic of Naomi turning heel. The fact that. Page is off doing a fucking movie. The fact that what's happening with the Bellas, we, we don't know. It, it's more suspense than it is action. Um, and it's, it makes for an interesting thing. Um, okay. But anyway. But. And then we had uh, the third match of the King of the Ring uh, tournament Dean versus Sheamus. Uh, you know, in, there was this really. Uh, Big Dean Ambrose fan when uh, he comes out, she was dancing all around, blonde girl in the crowd. I don't know if you guys saw. Oh, that. I saw that. I saw yeah. that. I saw oh, that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that was just like her moment right there. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of the the, the, the punk girl. You know the uh, there's there's this uh, there's this one time that punk came out 
and they shot a girl in the stands dancing just like that. <laughs> do you, I forgot which one it no, was. Every now and then they'll do that. They'll cut in the crowd and there'll just be someone marking out Some above chick. all else. Yeah, just like Bye! like but like a kind of a sexy chick though. Yeah, yeah. I mean they they mean they meant the shot. They meant the. But you shot don't know that shot I'm talking about. I'm about to do the research. It, it was what it's a shot I've seen several times. Uh. Oh, man, what was it? That's not important, but it was like the same exact thing. Uh, never mind. I liked how they they had a few new camera angles in this match, which is pretty interesting. They had a turnbuckle cam. Did you see that? Well, the turnbuckle cam showed up during uh, Survivor Series. Oh, well, I never. It seen made it made its debut at the Survivor Series. No, that's about. I apologize. Not what's at the Survivor Series now. Now the elimination chain, fast lane. They, no, debuted, they debuted that at Fastlane. It was Hell in the Cell after Survivor Series. And then it went to Royal Rumble, then Fastlane, then Mania. So Fastlane. Sorry. So they debuted at Fastlane. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I didn't notice it there, but I thought it was pretty cool. I always, I mean, I watch it all, you know, I watch the show every week, so it's always good to get a little, even for a split second, just a different angle would be, it's cool. Uh, I feel like it's like because of Lucha Underground. Like oh yeah they got like these cool angles Let, let's do something else like oh yeah let's put one in a in a, in a fucking bowl. hey competition that's what we wanted is to it pushes everybody and but I, I don't but I don't it, see that as I don't see that as much of a stretch oh yeah it's not a stretch. I mean th- you know I think uh, they're just feeling wh- I mean going with what you're saying if they saw Lucha Underground and then that pushed them to think a little bit and do little different things because uh, they did another uh, a th- I forget who it was but there's another new camera angle where someone stood on the table and they shot from behind I think it was Roman Reigns at the beginning there was a I guess a second jib camera or something like that where they shot behind him when he was standing on the table facing the ring and that's that shot's never been done before either or that shot I've never seen before I should mm. say never I've that's never I've never caught it so I guess they're working on maybe because it's Lucha Underground maybe they're just full you gotta, you gotta do more uh, the cinematic uh, experience of Lucha Underground versus just a, a fucking uh, well, got whatever a, 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 a GoPro in a in a in a, in a pole is just not gonna do it. I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool. I, I, I like the progression. I like the progression. Yeah, you gotta start not somewhere. Nece- not necessarily to start. Uh, and then, uh, but yeah, Ambrose is DQ'd via Dolph Ziggler um, coming out and attacking. Sheamus. Yeah, so then Seamus moves on. And then we had uh, the Damien Sandman. Poor Sam- Ambrose! Man, I mean... Uh, God! He won the match on pay-per-view. He got to win. He got to win on the pay-per-view. And he didn't necessarily lose this match, so I guess they feel like they're keeping him hot, but he doesn't seem important, really. Uh, then we had the Damien Sandow promo. What would you think of this? We don't really have to go into this. We all saw it. you think it was necessary. Uh, I thought it was good, and I thought Axel should have came out and said, "I hate it when people think there's something that they're not," That's, and then and then gone into the Hogan spot. Yeah, that was pretty funny, but nevertheless, yeah. But was was this even necessary? It dragged on so much, especially with the uh, with the whole like imitation thing. Oh look, I'm gonna do something different than what I was with Miz now, but then he just goes back into it with the whole mocking. I, this what did this advance? I guess in terms of the Damian Sandow like progression of him being Damian Sandow again, like this was a waste of my time. Well, he was always a good. I think this is not Damian Sandow again. I think he's uh, this is this is his new character, his babyface character that he's gonna like. He got everyone loves him now because of all these things he's gonna do. Now he's trying to get the respect of the people who love him. So I think hopefully, hopefully. If they do it right, they're going to start with Axel, then they maybe go to an Adam Rose, and they go to an R-Truth, and he works his way up. As in, like, me, 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 me. No, I mean, that shit needs to stop. But as, a, like, a worker, people need to, like, he needs to start trying to prove his work rate. Uh, I mean, ideally, but who knows? The payoff at the end was pretty cool because, you know, he, he, he drops him, and he drops... It looks like he's about to, like, imitate... Super kick, elbow, and leg drop. Yeah, he, but, he does, but he does Hogan. That's what he did. He's like, okay, you think you're Hogan? I'll show you about the Hogan. He does the big drop. He does the big leg. I mean, the big kick. And then he does the big leg. And it looks like he's about to do something else. But he drops the... the, uh, the um, I, I can never say the word of it. I'll be old copy at whatever the fuck it's called. But it's the elbow to stay. 
Yeah. That's what he drops on them. And, and alright, they could have gotten there a little bit faster. But, like, what is the purpose of... What was the purpose of Damien said When he came out... You know what I was thinking, almost uh, initially? Is that, like, one of the things within the Miz and Miz Dow feud... Is that Miz, like, Miz was talking about how he had gotten fired. And that he had showed up, sit, taught... Vince and keeping his job and that he would take him under his wing. That's that was remember, that was Mrs. Beef. Right? Yeah. I thought that Damien like I'm gonna be honest with you. I thought he was gonna go into that. I thought he was gonna go into the I did he had gotten fired. That's what I was waiting for. Like why did he get fired? Well he kinda yeah, well I guess And that's, why that's... did Miz like oh, I'm just I'm be transparent with you guys. It's something that Miz was talking about. I figured I'd come clean with you guys. And that was not even the case. So I was highly disappointed. Like, that would have advanced a lot of what it was. But it didn't go that way. I think they they could have done more with having uh, maybe a squash match. And then Damien Sando asking for the mic. And then cutting the promo he cut at the beginning. Not some kind of weird segment where he mocks him. This, that's like a third grade playground shit. Uh... Yeah, so, I mean, I wasn't really too excited about that, and uh, we'll, I guess we'll see where it goes. I'm optimistic about Sandow. He's a great worker. We go into a Bray promo, though. The package, I don't get it. Like, I... He didn't say, so right back, you were the motherfucker I was talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I go, so <laughs> it true. wasn't... That's what I was talking about earlier. So right back was it who you were going after? Oh, talk about a ruse. I think I think no I think it was kind of I think he is uh, he was talking about Ryback the whole time. He would have said it. He would have brought it up. It would have been a thing. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't mention anything about Ryback or anything that he had fucking attacked him. Well, he's mysterious, man. He's not gonna. This is not about Ryback. I think it's gonna be. I think we're at least gonna get a Ryback Bray match at the pay per view or the uh, payback. Three weeks, Christ. We haven't seen Bray much at all, so... He wasn't talking about Ryback. You don't think so? You Mm -hmm. think it was a Kane? I think that was just a ruse. I think that was all a ruse. He should have never showed back up for that package. He should have never showed back up for that package. To to go out, attack a guy, you'd be like, yeah, so uh, Ryback, you're the motherfucker I've been talking about. Yeah. That wasn't the case, so he wasn't talking... He's, he's, he's directed his anchor towards someone else. I mean, I, we'll just see. I think it was I think it was Ryback, but we'll just see. We'll see. I don't he, know. He came out there because someone was picking on his baby brother. <laughs> uh, and then we go into the last, the fourth and last uh, first round King of the Ring match. Uh, Neville versus Harper. The best first round match, I think. Neville was good as always right here. Beautiful springboard moonsault. Threw him in the ring. And then, like, textbook standing shooting star. Like, it's hard to even say textbook, because I think if they read out the standing shooting star, it, this is, like, better than that. Um, uh, dirty sit-down powerbomb by uh, Harper in the match, but Neville does uh, eventually win with the red arrow. Great match. Expecting nothing less of these two guys. What'd you think? You hit it on the head? Yeah. I mean, I, I haven't... It, it was... Uh, all I have is... That sit down quarter final, final and then match of the night. The only thing is that that red art he he got a little too much knee on the land. Like yeah. it was more like a slap on the slap of the belly than it was <laughs> a land. You know, like he slapped his hands. I was more shocked about the uh, the power bomb though. That was just big, dude. Yeah. That blew my that blew me away. Um, I'm sick of I'm sick. Of, we talked about this last week. I'm sick of Harper being just someone's good win, yeah. like. Uh, after a while, you're not gonna be a good. He's not gonna be a uh, to get a win on him is not gonna be good because he's never he never wins. You know, it'd be a good feud him and Barrett, especially if Barrett, if Barrett pushes this whole King thing he's doing. Not to, but it, but they would just be in favor. Like I want him to win. I want I well it's if you want to be the sadistic scary guy. You gotta win some. You gotta win something, bro. Course, yeah. You gotta win, and I don't. When the last time Harper won something? He got a one, two, three pin. Uh, when he won the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, maybe. With the assist of of, of, of a bunch of other fucking people. Yeah, they're they're. I mean, since he left 
the Wyatt family, and since they broke those up, those guys up, I think they mishandled all of them. But he's at least staying afloat, unlike Rowan, who's sinking like a rock. Uh, Why he's not fired is beyond me. Well, but he's not winning. He's getting these spots, and he's just making everyone else look good. When can he look good? He needs to shake. He, at some point, he needs to change his entire gimmick. And it's part of the story. Where it's like, he needs to turn into something else. Like, this is this gimmick he has, and him just keep losing. Something has to turn around. He's too good of a talent. And this gimmick is holding him down, I think. It's holding him down. And then we go into the uh, main event. The standard Raw tag main event. Uh, Roman Reigns, Randy Orton versus Kane Rollins, Justin Bieber chants all over the arena, uh, what have you. Uh, what do you think of this match? Well, this is again, this is all about Kane. This is about Kane. It's about Rollins. Like Orton and Reigns, it could have been anybody. It could have been the primetime players. It could have been, it could have been the fucking uh, Los Matadores. Uh, this entire match has everything to do with the relationship between. Kane and Rollins and it resulted I mean you could call some spots that's, and that's fine but it, it boiled down to two inadvertent like shots from Rollins onto Kane and Rollins being like oblivious to the fact that he had just fucked up Kane because he it yeah. seems like he wants to make good but like um, what's the word uh, reluctantly is putting in a situation where he pisses Kane off. Do you think we're going to get eventually a Kane Rollins pay per view match? Like I said before, I think we're more inclined to get a Kane Triple H match. I heard you say that, and uh, I don't want to see. I definitely want to see. I don't want to see Triple H Kane. But Why not? I don't think any of those guys are good. I don't think Triple H is that good. But, but you're a Triple H guy. Have you forgotten? Because you haven't gotten the shirt, I, I, because you don't have the shirt on yet. Only in print, folks. Only in print. Doesn't mean that you ain't a Triple H guy yet. I think the two of them could go in and really give a good match, especially if the Demon came. I mean, we're all well, I mean, waiting for the Demon Kane to come back. I was gonna say, but if they don't give us Rollins and Kane now, then this really will be pointless. I'm gonna be pissed if they don't do it now, because. They've been building this up for since Mania. Well, since before Mania. Well, I always say, well, but I feel like Rollins is only the vehicle of the chosen champion that Triple H has given us. He's a chosen champion by Triple H. And Triple H wants to keep him as champion, but he also wants Kane as an employee. So what's happening with what Kane is doing while Triple H is gone, is gone rogue. And even though Triple H is giving him, like, it, you know, he's he's saying, dude, like, look, dude, look, dude, you're not the big Ram machine anymore. Just be a just be a suit, man. Just work with me, man. Just go along with Rollins being a snot, man. And he refuses to do it. And I feel like what's going to happen is Triple H is like, Dude, I've given you simple tasks to protect our champion. What the fuck's your problem? Yeah. I gave you the gatekeeper role. You went in and, and okay, we won, but you almost fucked it up. I have to put you in your place. Or because he, when he gave his fucking two weeks notice, you know, that in itself was the beginning of the Triple H feud. Ro- Rollins is only the vehicle. To advance the storyline, I think a potential Triple H Kane feud. And is it going to happen for SummerSlam? Doubt. Maybe because Triple H wants that. He wants that. Oh, I don't. I don't think. Uh, I think maybe uh, Kane and Rollins would be a good Money in the Bank be, uh, title Money match. Money in the Bank. No, not a title match. Because then Triple they could H make it to Kane. You Money in the Bank. Triple H Kane. Money I don't think Triple H is going to do a B show. Well, it will only have to happen. I mean, we're dragging this out too much. He Kane has to choose a side at some point. Yeah. I, I mean, it's it's dragging out. Um, I like how the story's developing, but it's becoming all about him in moments where it shouldn't. 
uh, like a steel cage match between Randy Orton, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and, and Seth Rollins. Um, it, it, that it, whole debacle they did where they redid the WCW Lay Down for Me angle at, at London, that was stupid. I think we're both in agreement here that this is just the tension they're building needs we just want a match because we just want it to end and that's not the kind of heat you want we don't want a match just to, you know from a guy that we already know i mean you put let's just put wait barrett, barrett in that position yeah it's interesting it's new it's hot it's a it's a guy on his upcomings not someone who's already had his heyday um it could be it could be biggie langston i mean it could be just someone just someone big someone fresh someone new um uh it could be it could be, it could even be Ambrose. I mean, like, it could be a multitude of guys that we just want to see them develop. We've seen yeah. Kane develop. There's not much more developing we can get out of Kane. He's just going to lose to somebody and then eventually retire at some point. They always try to push Kane around this time of year for some reason. I don't know why. Remember, remember? Post, post, uh, post WrestleMania last year. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, uh,. I don't know why, but uh, good on Kane, man. Congratulations, Kane. You got you stayed in this long. You know, I remember, remember the Undertaker did his decade of destruction. I don't know what Kane's at now, but he's at like twenty years of destruction. He could do like old old boy uh, Max Landis can actually do an entire like twenty years. Like, he did twenty years with Triple H. He can do twenty years with Kane. Oh yeah. Um, but before we, that that wraps up, whatever. I, I'm sorry to sound like what was it? We found out the Triple Threat. Yeah. At the, at, the end of, at the end of the match. I mean, I don't even really want to go into it. Um, the, um, RKO on the Rollins for the pin. A, a Superman punch into an RKO on Rollins for the pin. Again, the champion gets pinned again. Um, it's not for a title, but he gets pinned again. And then afterwards, after the thing is done, Kane goes outside because he's already pitched a fit. He's like, oh, yeah, so we're going to go see what this fucking match at Payback is going to be. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a triple threat match. And then fucking reigns of all people like what are you doing he hits him with a fucking spear like really that's pretty fucking heelish yeah i i guess i just stopped paying attention to that point because it was just like the it was just really insulting pull they could have just announced the three-way they didn't have to do the like is it going to be rollin orton is it going to be reigns or is it going to be orton and reigns like who are you going to pick You're but we're not done with this yet you know what i'm waiting for for Kane to be the special guest referee. Oh. The gatekeeper referee. Uh. Whatever, man. Yeah, whatever. I, I like the progression. There was a point where it was hot for me with Kane and his progression. Now I'm just like, nah, dude. This is not cool anymore. At all. Well, we not, when you, not when you got guys like Ambrose. I didn't think you were going to be this upset, Peter. I think we hit you. We, WWE woke you up on the wrong side of the bed this morning or something. Maybe. I'm just messing around. No, I, 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 there's a frustration. The start off so hot after WrestleMania. The start off so hot, like yeah. And Five then, weeks later, and, and then, and then this. It's it's pretty disappointing. Um, but can we, for five minutes, talk about how I was right, you were wrong? With what? With the idea of um, Daniel Bryan not winning a championship. Not winning. One of my biggest things about... The championship? What do you mean? Facing Brock Lesnar to win the championship. Oh, at Mania? Yeah. That was seven, six, seven weeks ago. Hey, you know, but at this time we're dealing with a very uh, injured Daniel Bryan. One of my biggest things... There's a discussion, too. We can go back and we can find it and we'll bring it up uh, as a point of reference. You were just like, Daniel's a better wrestler... Daniel's this, Daniel's that. I never disagreed with you, ever, about how he should have been there. My thing was his health. And I go, I don't think he's at 100% if I'm in a position where I'm trying to get someone that I can rely on and their health at 100%. The last person I'm picking is Daniel Bryan because he's a risk. He wins the belt, and then what? He gets hurt again? Like, if I'm Vince... I'm like, no, I'm not putting my eggs in that basket. Not until I know for sure that he is 100%. And that was my entire argument the whole time. Not that he didn't deserve it or that Reigns deserved it more or this, that. It's that he's accident prone right now. He's just got out of a fucking spinal injury. Like, spinal 
surgery, which isn't a walk in the park. And then he's still going relentless out there. He's having matches with fucking Harper that damn near kills him. He's headbutting. Yeah, he's headbutting his head, but he's still hand, but he's still putting a lot of like uh, inertia on his neck. It's it's just that the guy refuses to let down, and he's not on TV yet again. I mean, I don't know what to say. Uh, it's a bummer he's gone. I wish he gets better. Uh, most but, but if he would have won the cha- he won the championship. If he would have went up against Brock Lesnar. I don't think he should have necessarily won. Well, he even fought. Because obviously it was the David I mean, you obviously thing. don't know that he was going to get hurt. We didn't know that. I did. The entire time. I've talked about this. Like, every time he's in the I'm ring. Saying, like, WWE, like, you know, you can't. Oh, they knew. Or oh, they would have put him in a position to have that belt. Maybe. I think they just didn't like him from the get-go. They said he ruined... They, he took over last year's man. They weren't going to put him in that big of a spot. I don't think it's that simple. I think it was something more serious. I think they were concerned about his health. And I think they were concerned about his work rate. He doesn't... He's always on 11. Yeah. After a fucking spinal surgery. You look at all the greats that ever hurt themselves. You look at Shawn Michaels. You look at... Uh, you look at uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. They all changed their fucking work rate. They changed their style. I mean... Daniel Bryant is just over. He can stand in the middle of the ring, reading War and Peace, in like sweatpants <laughs> and a sweater, and people are just like, yes, yes. Yeah. I mean, what does he have to do in the ring to get more over than he already is? Well, I think there's just the understanding that he was never supposed to be over to the, to the caliber that he was. So with that comes pressure, and I think that like the company that put the pressure on you, you're going to be a little hesitant to believe them when they say that they took the pressure off. You're going to think that they're fucking with you a little bit. So I can see how he wouldn't take it off. And plus, he's not that kind of person to not give 100%, not give 110%. That's uh, a detriment, though. It is to a detriment, but, uh, I mean, I don't, I mean, he's not going to listen to, he's not going to listen to you, Peter. He's going to go out there. I'm not asking him to listen to me. I'm only saying that... There was a reason why they didn't put him in that position to face Brock Lesnar for that belt. Because A, the public pressure would have been to have Brian win. And then... You don't think they would have done just the, Seth, the same thing with Seth coming out, taking out Brian, and then taking out Lesnar? You know what? You know what? Maybe that would be the case. But nevertheless, I think it's easier to be injured... And taken off TV as the Intercontinental Champion or someone who had a shot at the Intercontinental Belt than a repeat than a repeat of last year where after WrestleMania he's out for weeks again. Yeah, I can definitely see that because he did come back just for just at Rumble time. So he came back in December. I don't know, I'm not gonna, you know, hindsight's 2020, man, I'm not gonna. I can admit when I'm wrong. I guess I was wrong. Well, I mean, I'm, it's a stress to say I'm right, you're wrong. Cool. But I, I'm not wrong. I'm not right, nor am I wrong. I know I addressed this earlier. It's a shame. I think it's a real fucking shame that we we don't have Daniel Bryan as one of our superstars again when we need him most. And it just goes, it, you know, I just go, well... Man, what if he would have had that championship shot? What if he would have had the belt? And then we lose him again. I mean, it's a huge word. It's the most dangerous word there possibly is. But the outlier that Daniel Bryan is uh, of, of how people love him so much. It's fragile, yeah. It compromises everything. It's it, insane to think about, right? It's like crazy. It's like a... Uh, like, uh piece of like fine like china or something you know it's your favorite you put it on the top shelf you don't even eat on it yeah but you know it's gonna fall you know you put it on the top shelf for it to fall one day so you can feel the pain of it falling one day it's like kind of a weird thing that that daniel bryan has become you know mm-hmm. and whenever he's in the ring I, and plus like he he he's a he's a detriment to himself and until you do get a guy like neville right who's like crazy but you can see since his days in New Japan, the first ever, the first ever time I ever saw it was the time that you showed me 
him versus um you showed me Neville versus uh King Omega. So I like that match a lot. I should. Have no, it was it was uh the dude from uh with the face paint. Um oh uh Prince Devitt or Finn Prince, Baylor. It was Prince Devitt. The, that was the first match you said, "Hey, check this out." And I was oh, like, nice. "What?" <laughs> that you we sat in here and it was I think it was like one of our botched podcasts like when yeah. we first started. And it was like we sat. I sat in there and the fucking phone went dead. And so we was like, "Oh man, this sucks." Might as well watch him wrestle. You show me this shit, and I go like, "Dude, this is fucking amazing." He was reckless. Both Devin and were reckless. But that's what they do over there in Japan. And what that was. What match was that? If you don't mind. Um, I'm not. I'm not too sure the validity of that match. Uh, but I just know it's pretty, that match. And then the there's a Kenny Omega of uh, Pac or Neville match. That's really good that I always like to show people who are like non-wrestling fans mm-hmm. or maybe have never seen a high flyer I always like pick those two out to show them so uh well I wasn't an independent guy yeah. and that was the that was you opened up the door for me and the whole independent style of wrestling thing I always thought like it was like a dark comedy I always looked at independent wrestling as like dark comedy mm-hmm. you know like like uh like uh what, what, what's that dude um red hair buck teeth the movie uh, he does the dance. Oh, like Carrot Top? No, not Carrot Top. No, the movie. Um, the oh, girl. you thought he was like a Napoleon Dynamite. That's how I view independent wrestling. Like a really dark humor thing. And when I saw that match, it kind of opened my eyes to the talent that exists outside of, say, the world of WWE. Yeah, or, say, true. WCW. The two that I grew up on, NWA, what have you. Um, shut up. Um, that's the uh, Raw General Manager. He actually lives with us now. Um, but he's converted. He's changed his style. I think longevity versus work rate. Like, what do you choose? You think Neville's changed his style? Yeah, he. I th- yeah, he's he's taking it down. I mean, he does cool spots, but he's not doing reckless spots. Um. I don't know, man. I think he's he's definitely brought that style, like the uh, 450 off the rail. He still does shooting star, standing shooting stars, some gigantic uh, uh, springboard moon salts every match. Are those uh, big spots? Or are they reckless spots? Well, I don't really think he's being too reckless prior. I think he was who? just Neville. I think he was just working faster because he can work mm-hmm. with guys who are working just as he can work with guys that are working just as fast. Whereas now he's got to slow it down. Just because the guys he's working with, but um, I don't think he was really being too reckless prior, like a where Daniel Bryan would be stiff and everything like that. Uh, I think it's more graceful with Neville, and that goes for his stuff in Japan as well as. That's a good point. But I just thought I'd bring that up. Um, let's go ahead and close this fucker down. Hell yeah! Cool. I mean, I think yeah, well, it's like we're at like 140. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Makes for two two things. Yeah. We went longer with the uh, paper review than I thought we would. We had a lot to cover. Yeah. Uh, uh, very negative Nancy Peter today. Yeah. And heel heel Peter today. And if you want to talk to this negative Nancy on Twitter, uh, L in Japanese on Twitter, and we, that is one word L I N J A P A N E S E. And I'm a JG Pro Wrestling on Twitter, and we also have PJTW Central on Twitter. We have a SoundCloud for the, all these. We have YouTube's Stitcher. Do your thing. Download it. Hit us up. Tell us what you think. Yeah, go to pjtwcentral.com um, and check out the um, the uh, bunch of fucking podcasts. What are we, we're what we're, we're um, thirty what six? Thirty six. Now we're getting them. This is PJTW. This is Peter Jake Talks Wrestling Thirty Six. Um, go and check out a lot of things that we have in the back in the catalog. Um, starting. F- Say from now back, check out uh, the Peter's Extreme Rules reactions. You go to the P- you can go to the Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling YouTube. Um, check out Jake's interview with John Hitchcock. Oh yeah, uh, I'm really excited about that. It was a nice little hour interview. Uh, like I said, you know before, if you're really into the history of wrestling. I really recommend it. This guy is kind of like a historian. He goes back to talking about wrestling from the 60s uh, in the YMCA, and he goes, he talked, I think he dropped 
Ivan Koloff and Wahoo McDaniel, and he also talked about how he likes Dolph Ziggler and Trevor Lee. So that just was a uh, amazing background knowledge, and uh, he also has a book, Front Row Section D, with all the stories that he's shared on the interview in the book as well. Yeah, the Glory Days of Mid Atlantic. That's the uh, yeah. That, that was that's part of the title. Like uh, actually, yeah, yeah, it's a pretty good book. Pretty good um, and check out Peter Talk Smackdown. Uh, that's every Saturday as well. Like, I post those every Saturdays. Uh, they're Saturdays. I figured out a way to get them up faster. Fuck yeah. Um, and then, um, Faster Than the World podcast. Hell yeah. Um, if uh, you're itching to know what how someone feels about NXT from last week, be sure to check out that. And for shits and giggles, if you want to check out last week's Raw review. and um, Yeah, we definitely have an archive. And, and, and see our faces give our um, predictions where I kicked ass for Extreme Rules. Um, awesome. Congratulations, dude. I, I owe you a beer next time. Tonight, tomorrow, Fast in the World podcast um, upload. Uh, this Friday, um, Peter Talks Wrestling with Nathan. I think I'm just going to go with... Um, uh, we, we, I, I think I want to go by the... Because his last name is Newman. Mm-hmm. My last name is Day. New Day. Newman Day. New Day. <laughs> nice. We're the New Day. I like it. Feel the power. I can feel it. He's going to be so upset. He's going to be like, dude, fuck that. He's going to tweet when he listens. He's going to be like, fuck that shit. <laughs> um, and, um, what, uh, yeah, that's, I mean, other than Peter Talk Smackdown, that's, that's what we got going on. Um, oh, yeah. So, you got any last words? Before uh, we have our own goddamn Royal Rumble in here? <laughs> hit, it, hit me up on Twitter, man. I really uh, talk wrestling all day. And the Ellen Japanese thing is all Twitter, Instagram, um, and even um, Snapchat if you're interested in seeing me, like, drink beer and have sex. Um, so, we end it right here. Hell yeah. Later. Uh, Fast in the World podcast tomorrow. Check it out. You have been listening to Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling Podcast. Please tune in next week. It's like, come on, y'all, get locked it down. It's like, come on, y'all, get locked it down. I said, come on, y'all, get locked it down. I said, come on.